I know how unfair it is to task you with the compulsory confinement aspect of an institution you had no part in creating. But my job, as I see it, is to provoke you into seeing that tacit complicity in serving this scheme is complicity nonetheless. It was only when I ultimately was able to work out a strategy to sabotage the subject-driven compulsory attendance provision of forced schooling that my school teaching job, which I defined for myself as being useful to young people, not in the abstract, collectively, but to each one individually and particularly, that my job became much easier as an explosion of productivity, resourcefulness, concentration, and self-reliance was the result of this sabotage. I freed my kids of the terrible obligation of being children when they were not. I did that as often as I could, and they rewarded me for 30 years beyond my wildest dreams. Over the last 15 years I spent in the classroom, I came to see that I was learning much, much more than I was teaching. Try to see the horrifying, soul-deadening waste of human energy that confinement schooling entails. If you add the institutional schooling period to the old age disenfranchisement we've arranged for our citizens, we waste well over half of our national pool of imagination. That inventiveness and many other good things that we can't really afford to throw away anymore. By the age of 12, Benjamin Franklin was working 60 hours a week at a real job and using his spare time to take a first-class education from the living world around him. Read his truly astonishing autobiography to learn the details of his curriculum. Read it carefully with a notebook in hand, and I promise you, you'll never look at 12-year-olds as children again. And just as soon as you throw away the rules of child development, which have been carefully conditioned into you, theories based on averages, so guaranteed to break down in the fact of no two alike young people with no two alike fingerprints, your teaching will improve dramatically. By the age of 12, our dumbest founding father, George Washington, roundly considered to be a dull fellow by his friends and neighbors, had studied trigonometry, geometry, and surveying at the hands of a jailed criminal, the only man silly enough to want to teach. And he had also studied architecture, shipbuilding, clothing design, and clothing construction. He says somewhere in his, his writing that you'd have to be an idiot to allow somebody to make your clothing for you since that was the first impression you gave to the outside world and you wanted something that important under your own control. But he also had studied formally public speaking, farming, finance, and persuasive writing. Of all those things, he said ballroom dancing and horseback riding were the two most valuable things he ever learned. And other people said that too. They said that when Washington entered a room, his carefully balanced dynamic physique was so powerful that everyone just stopped speaking and looked at George. And when he was asked how he got that way, he said, ballroom dancing and horseback riding. I recommend it. <laughs> And he did all these things on his own as an unschooler. By the age of 12, Thomas Jefferson managed a large plantation of 2,500 acres on his own, his parents both dead. He also managed 250 employees 
He met budgets. He did purchasing. By the age of 12, Ensign David Farragut, one day to be the very first admiral in the American Navy, was captaining a captured British warship with orders to sail it from Peru to Boston without a school teacher in tow or a parent to monitor his progress. By the age of 12, Thomas Edison had a very profitable business up and running a thousand miles from home with no cell phone to call mommy when he got into trouble. Artificially extending childhood is the way schools use to cripple the majority of our population lifelong. Many parents have been gulled into assisting this procedure. Don't you be one of them. 